But there, look at this verse from uh, Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, where it says, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. It's an interesting statement with regard to Enoch, just in these early chapters of Genesis, because uh, it speaks about everybody else, how they died. But with Enoch, it just says, he was not anymore. You know, God just, you know, he walked with God, and ultimately he just walked off into eternity, it would seem. Then we get that same turn of phrase used for Noah. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time, and he walked, oh, sorry, if it's yellow and in bold, please join me. Okay, ready? One, two, three, and he walked in close fellowship with God. So we get this sense of people walking with God. It's an interesting way to describe our relationship with God. It's, it's a journeying metaphor, isn't it? That there's, there's movement associated with it, there's progress associated with it. I would dare say to each one of us, that God walks in the realms of our life. And we can either join him and walk with God in the various realms of our life, or we can step back and God can be walking through our workplace. He can be walking through our neighborhood. He can be walking through our home, even in that proximity of our inner world, walking through our heart. And we don't always have a proclivity to join him, do we? That's true. Uh, we get this very candid statement made in Genesis 3 verse 8 with regards to Adam and Eve, where it says, when the cool of the evening breezes were blowing, say it with me, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God uh, among the trees. And of course, then we get God asking the question, not for his sake, but for Adam's, Adam, where are you? So our, uh, our lives can be portrayed, and we can use this metaphor of walking with God. So today, I want to open up this whole domain of the rhythms and rituals of walking with God. Now, most of you, if I started to quote, uh, most of you would recognize these words of the Lord Jesus, where he said, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls." For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <clears throat> now, the message translation puts it this way. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Come away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Isn't that a lovely turn of phrase? Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Uh, keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So this whole, um, this whole concept of rhythms and rituals, our rhythms are to do with our when, our rituals are to do with our what. And we all have rhythms and rituals. We've got an example of uh, Daniel uh, after an, after um, a law was passed that was banning him uh, from praying to anyone else apart from the key leader at the time, but we get this we get this little peep into Daniel's rhythms and rituals in Daniel chapter six verse ten. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home. We've watched some of these patterns. He went home. He knelt down as usual in his upstairs room. With his windows open toward Jerusalem, he prayed three times a day, just as he always had done, giving thanks to his God. So his rhythms were that he prayed three times a day. Craig Rochelle said, successful people do consistently what normal people do occasionally. I think it's a great insight. Our rituals are our what? So with regard to Daniel... We see several layers to his rituals. He went home. That was, that was part of his ritual. Uh, he knelt down as usual in his upstairs room. So he had a place. He had a time. He had a place. He opened the windows towards Jerusalem. He had a certain practice that he would do. He gave thanks to his God. So multiple layers that we see there in Daniel's rituals that were embedded into a Rhythm. Now, I am um, Edie for decades. I will see Edie sitting in our lounge room. Edie is my wife, for those of you who don't know. Uh, I'll see Edie sitting in the lounge room in the morning, 
She'll have a Bible open, she'll have a cup of coffee, she'll have a notebook and she'll have a pen. That is her rhythm and her ritual. It's morning based. I know she'll have already listened to a, um, like a Lectio Divina thing online, uh, Lectio 365, great app if you want to download it, it's brilliant and we both use it morning and evening as part of our rhythms and rituals. So I know she'll have already listened to that one in bed. That's the soft one. Lying in bed with the covers on and it just speaks to you. It's awesome. With regard to your own rhythms and rituals with God, and it's called habit stacking. Habit stacking. So let me tell you some of the habit stacks I do around my morning ritual. And it actually starts the night before. The night before, I put out all my gear I put it out into the lounge room. I try and get out without waking up Edie. I'm profoundly unsuccessful at doing that. I was unsuccessful this morning. But I put all my gear out into the lounge room and uh, so that all I have to do when I wake up is throw my legs out of the bed. That that one act, that literally I lie there, I realise I'm awake and um, I tend to make my opening thoughts uh, a prayer to God I'm like, all i got to do is throw these legs out of the bed. Once I've thrown my legs out of the bed, I have a series of, there's some rhythm and ritual connected to what's about to happen that's been incredibly restorative for me. And so I'll go out there, I'll get myself all dressed up, I had my wet weather gear ready because it was pouring with rain uh, early this morning. And uh, so I go and walk. Now, I'll have uh, my ears in. And uh, there are several things that I'll listen to. I'll listen to the uh, Lectio 365. So that's somebody else giving me a spiritual reflection and it helps to center my heart on the Lord. I'll walk in silence for a while. I will both pray, and, but I'll just enjoy some of the, uh, some of the silence. Uh, I will listen to my Bible. So I'll listen to multiple chapters of the Bible and, and kind of I'll focus in on, on a few different things from that. Uh, I will listen to the news. I want to hear what's happening uh, around the world. ABC News Radio, I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a listen to that, and I'll walk. Now, my walking becomes quite, therefore, um, metronomic. It's quite, it's just, I actually don't think about the walking. It's just happening. But that also is very good uh, for my body. Now, I've said this to you before, but I'm going to say it again, because I know we have to hear things multiple times sometimes. Um, at the back edge of 2022, I was on a downward trajectory as far as my sense of well-being. Uh, there was more than enough taking place, so I felt, I felt and feel called to Christian ministry. God was giving a superabundant level of opportunity, uh, high-impact opportunities. So I felt called. There was opportunity. They were working hard. I was resting. And uh, so, you know, uh, taking a uh, uh, day off and resting, and in the, in the evenings, uh, I'd, uh, I'd rest. But I wasn't, and here's the missing piece for me, I wasn't restoring. I was resting, but not restoring. So you can rest by lying on the couch with a packet of Doritos watching Netflix. You can rest like that. I, I love watching the footy. AFL, I love you. Let me put on an AFL game, lie on the couch, I can rest, especially when St Kilda are on top of the ladder. It's like, what a glorious season. I'm like, let's stop the season now and just declare St Kilda the Premiers, you know. So that is very restful for me, but it is not restorative. How are your rhythms and rituals as far as that which is restorative to your soul. <clears throat> you know, Craig Groeschel said, successful people do, uh, do regularly, cons consistently. Successful people do consistently what normal people do occasionally. Well, how do we build some of those things in? We have to first go through routines. We have to establish routines which will lead us into uh, rhythms and uh, rituals. The challenge with routines is they're uncomfortable, they require thought and effort. They require setting an alarm or a reminder. If you are going to introduce a new routine, it will not start easy. A routine is actually hard work. 
Now, once you've pushed it through your routines, which require alarms and hard work and all those sorts of things, once you get it to the rituals and rhythm stage, it takes little or no thought. Rituals and rhythms become habitual. It becomes the norm. It is now your norm. Now, everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. It's just to do with how we choose to invest those hours. No one gets an hour more. No one gets a minute more. We all get 24. We all need to sleep. Many of us have got to go to work. There's travel time and all those sorts of things. You can develop rhythms and rituals while you're on the public transport on the way to work. And if you want to just like a little kind of a quick peep in there, restoration usually requires effort. It's almost counterintuitive because rest you can do by turning everything off, lying on the couch, lying on your bed. You can rest like that, but restoration actually requires the injection of energy. As, uh, therefore, I'd say to you, healthy rhythms and rituals lead to revisioning as well. Uh, the best way I can describe uh, how I felt late 22 and how I'm positioned now, uh, the best way I can describe it, is, for me, it's like I came back. That's the best way I can describe it. I felt like late 22, I felt more vulnerable, I felt less creative. Uh, I had this kind of haunting uh, feeling, like, uh, am I able to kind of keep going at this pace? And it's not that my world has changed, my rhythms and my rituals have changed. And so I want to ask you about your rhythms and rituals, because sometimes we can connect rhythms and rituals and we can negatively parody it as religion in contrast to relationship. But what I want to say to you is healthy rhythms and rituals will actually bless relationships. It was Cory Ten Boom who said, what wings are to a bird and sails are to a ship, so is prayer to the soul. And that meeting with God, having rhythms and rituals in our prayer and in our meeting with God, it ultimately does bless our relationship with him. And I guess I just need to ask you today, do you need to review your rhythms and rituals with God? Do you need to establish some rhythms and rituals? Are you really haphazard in the way that you go about doing your stuff? 